Hey guys, welcome back to Vito's Garage. Despite this crazy weather, this rain, we're gonna be working on this Mercedes W123. This is actually a gasoline model. This is a 280E. Uh, and the owner brought it to me because uh, it needs to be repaired. There's a, there are several issues that need to be fixed on this car. So we're gonna go ahead and work on it today. And yes, it's raining like crazy and I'm working in the parking lot, but I don't care. We need to fix this car. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do today. And the main focus today in this video is gonna be uh, rear trailing arm and axle replacement and I will show you exactly why we're doing that but we're doing it today so this car is pretty clean so I'll show you the problem so we're gonna be replacing that rear trailing arm if you look from this angle this trailing arm is actually this wheel is pushed inwards so it has a positive camber uh, which is not right um, if you keep driving like this eventually the tire is gonna wear on the outer side um, and what actually happened is the owner got uh, bought this car like this uh, he got a pretty good deal on it but he bought it like this and what happened is uh, I mean you, it's still drivable actually which is crazy uh, these cars are really amazing but uh, that rear trailing arm and axle need to be replaced uh, because this tire is pushed in so someone uh, whatever previous owner or whoever else owned it before um, maybe just slid into the curb or something and just hit that thing pretty hard that's why it's actually sitting not straight but it's sitting like this a positive uh, angle hopefully you guys can see it hopefully this rain isn't making it harder but that's what's going on guys and if we actually look on this side this side is pretty straight there's no problems with it as you can see all right this is all straight shot so let me show you the interior guys this is actually this interior is really immaculate guys it's really beautiful and uh this dashboard looks amazing and everything i really love everything about this car actually um it's really pristine even has factory speakers in the back and everything and uh, yes it doesn't have a sunroof but who cares guys I mean I really love this thing uh, 182,000 miles and it's a gasoline model um, it's a really pristine car guys that I'll be working on today all right guys we're gonna go ahead and start this baby up and actually I, I got really surprised because this thing starts up pretty good uh, I'll show you right now Wow, guys, this is pretty amazing, right? And actually has some different exhaust. I don't think it's factory exhaust. It has exhaust leak, but uh, it has a different muffler too, which is which is pretty cool, guys. Uh, right there, that's the baby. I don't think uh, actually it could be factory. I'm probably just wrong, but just this tailpipe looks like a lot bigger than the, the ones on the diesel. got all my tools jacks all the tools then spring compressor and everything and over here we have new parts we have this trailing arm right here okay i'll show you later some details but yeah and then we have a brand new axle right there all right so i'm gonna 
first of all I'm gonna start removing the rear uh, seats um, to get to the shock absorber mounts and we'll go from there uh, like I said one more th one more time you can look at this wheel and how it's crooked um, so yeah let's go ahead I'm gonna start removing the, those seats and then we're gonna jack up the car all right guys we're removing the seat it's pretty easy on both sides there's like these push buttons you gotta push them in and this will release the bottom cushion <laughs> and we have some crazy stuff over here <laughs> uh, like usual crayons some old uh, newspapers and garbage yeah so taking this out and then next thing will be to take this cushion off i'm currently removing a couple of bolts on each side to remove this rear cushion all right after you remove those two bolts there's another bolt hiding right there so you gotta lift this armrest and it's that guy right there you have to take it off and then you will be able to lift off this rear back cushion all right this is all free I can go ahead and take it out. After the rear seat is has been removed, you can take this off and peel it back. And then using a plastic tool, you're gonna go ahead and remove this cover, which exposes your shock absorber top nuts. And you have to take those off, but ju not just yet. Um, we're going to probably jack it up right now and then gonna do it later. Um, so yeah, that's the plan guys. You don't really need to remove this plastic cover, just the top one. Alright guys, this is jacked up. I'm about to put some jack stands. I already chucked the car in the front, so we're not going anywhere. And being ready to remove this tire and start working on this baby. All right, guys, we have the car jacked up on jack stand and the cushion right there. I'm gonna use the tire as well for a laser jack stand in a little bit. But right now I'm gonna be uh, spraying everything with PB Blaster and soaking all the bolts, especially the bottom shock absorber uh, bolts. And then we're gonna get ready to start removing all this stuff. I can already see a lot of problems here with the brakes. The brake uh, pads are pretty low and the brake hose is actually trash uh, a lot of stuff guys um, and then later on I'm gonna start uh, working on a diff I'm gonna drain the diff fluid and remove the rear cover because we need to change this axle as well um, yeah guys quite a bit of stuff uh, and then that's pretty much the plan um, the main thing is this control arm needs to be replaced let me show you the damage okay so you go this way you can see right here where it got pushed in this way it's bent it's not supposed to be like this so that's that's the problem that's what happened they probably just uh, hit a curb really hard or something like that I really don't know like I mean were they drifting this car or something like what's going on like it's it just doesn't make sense you know um, yeah but other than that i mean the, the brake disc it doesn't look too horrible it has a little bit of a edge a ridge to it but it's still fine um yeah this will need to come off the caliper so that's what i'm gonna start working on next
guys disconnecting this sway bar link and literally everything is shot here the sway bar link is shot no brake pads brake hose is junk oh, needs a lot of work actually the parking brake cables uh shoes actually don't look too bad so we'll probably just reuse them because the new trailing arm didn't come with this so it's kind of pain and it's i'll have to just put it on but uh, i remember doing it on my own w123 uh quite a while ago and it actually was a pain especially with this uh, hub in place um so yeah i'll have fun i guess <laughs> right now you have this star wheel and you have to turn it one way to loosen all these uh, shoes for the parking brake you can see this is pretty sloppy right now that's what you want unless you have a new assembly um, and you need to go this route and you know undo everything but I mean, most of the time uh, on this car it seems like somebody replaced this parking brake uh, uh, assembly and shoes and stuff so which is a good thing a lot of people don't do that which is which is sad uh, another thing is if you have even if you have an automatic w123 you need to use your parking brake just to exercise it and actually if you park on a downhill or uphill whatever you have to actually apply the parking brake first and then you have to put it in park otherwise if you just put it in park it puts a lot of stress in that parking pole which is pretty bad so that's why it's a good idea to use um, the parking brake that's why it's called parking brake okay um to actually uh you know it's like a second safety as well and it doesn't put so much stress on that parking pole in your automatic transmission um so yeah check your parking brake shoes and replace them as needed another thing that i noticed is that you see that spring on this side and on this side it's missing that's not good it's missing that hold down spring for that shoe it's not good so I'm gonna have to tell the owner to actually go ahead and buy like a hardware kit or something so I don't know if I have any springs left or I don't think I'll be able to find them um, but yeah I mean shoes are fine other than that um, we'll see we might just replace this whole uh, uh, assembly you know um, uh, we'll see but if he can just get the hardware I mean that will work as well uh because this this is not a good thing right here uh there's supposed to be a spring but it's not there Alright guys, now while I'm still working on that trailing arm, I'm going to uh, drain the differential. I'm going to remove both fill and drain plugs uh, and I have to drain it. And then I'm going to start removing the rear cover so I can remove this axle. And that's the plan guys. Okay, fill plug is good, it's loose. I'm gonna remove the drain plug, which already loosened up. It's just coming out a little stiff, but... Blue is actually not too bad. It's pretty clean, I would say. We're gonna be changing it anyways so it's gonna have even more fresh fluid so yeah i'm gonna let it drain and i'm gonna keep working on my trailing arm all right while the differential is draining we're gonna go ahead i'm gonna go underneath and uh, remove some uh, heat shields and start removing the disconnecting the parking brake cable from one of those uh, from the main cable all right so underneath here is already removed there's the the heat shield right there you can take that off and take this off okay so that uh, will expose the our cable and there's a clip right there there are clips too all right and then there's right there there's a retainer you have to take off and then you have to go 
further there and you have to disconnect it from the middle section guys this is a real pain i had to remove all these uh, uh heat shields and there was a spring right here i already took it off with a couple of uh, uh like clips basically and then this right here i already loosened it up but it goes this end hooks up right there all right i'm not gonna hook it back up but uh, then after you take it off you can actually move it this way and then that way you see that uh, those two uh, parking brake cables and that way you can go ahead and actually take the uh, them off and that's it that's what I'm gonna do now sorry if it's too dark it's really difficult to film here but yeah and then that retainer has been removed that clip has been removed and that's it on this side we're pretty much ready to go All right, parking shoes are off. Right now I'm disconnecting the uh, parking brake cable from the hub, from the knuckle. Right there is the bolt. And then uh, we're gonna probably have to take, take off this Allen bolt as well. And transmission is in neutral, so I can turn this thing around. All right guys, so the cable is disconnected from this side. And right now I took everything off here and I can pull it right here this way and I'll show you some trick all right so this is my cable right and it comes off like this and right now don't lose this all right it just fell out it's like a kind of like a pin all right it goes right here okay and then this thing comes off like so okay now you can pull the cable out this way through that hole all right so there's the cable all right that's how it comes off and right now as you can see it's attached right there to the control arm so you're gonna push it out actually you, you will not be able to do that the whole cable has to come this way also, what you could do as a maintenance is you could put a lot of grease in here on this cable when you put it, everything back. And this thing will never seize. And actually, they never actually pretty much seize. They're amazing cars, so they it's it's made so reliable with quality that it's just it's just unbreakable. Towards here. Sometimes you just have to guide it over there as well. It's gonna come out. There you go. It's our cable. And it only comes out this way. You cannot push it out this way just because of this retainer. So, and yes, don't worry, I'm gonna clean it all up nicely and lube it up. It's gonna be a nice thing right here, nice cable. All right, guys, here's our new trailing arm. Uh, what I'm gonna do is clean it even more to make it nice. And the owner uh, said that, you know, the bushings are fine. He doesn't want to replace them. So we're gonna leave them like that. And this wheel bearing, I'm not really liking it. It has a little bit of noise and it has some play. When I was moving it back and forth, it has some play. Uh, so I'm gonna let him know, but today I just wanna install this either way. If anything, we can replace the bearing while it's on the car. Um, but yeah, guys, that's the thing. I'm gonna go ahead and clean it all up nicely and I'll probably paint this back in plate for him. Uh, it's gonna be nice and uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. All right, I just washed and cleaned this control arm. It's just uh, getting dry right now. And then later on, I'm gonna apply some paint to this thing. So it's gonna look really nice and gonna be even more protected. And it's so nice how this part of the parking brake mechanism is still factory gold color. It's so nice. All right, now I have the control arm jacked up and I'm removing 
the shock absorber, uh, the top mounts. So now, after we remove the top mount, uh, we're gonna remove uh, the bottom two bolts, 17 millimeter. Um, and this is also, I had a jack here, so I don't want the handle hitting the fender. Uh, so that's why I just taped it up uh, nicely. And uh, um, yeah, I already had those soaking, but um, it's a good idea to do. And now I'm taking the last bolt. it shock absorber is pretty much out the only thing is uh, and then this washer will need to be replaced look at this it just got split in half so yeah now I need to take it out completely so I have to jack up the car all right otherwise it's not coming out so this needs to be jacked up really high otherwise the shock absorber is not coming out so just keep that in mind. This thing is finally coming out. Right there. Okay. Now we can lower this down again. I'm gonna go ahead actually and uh, um, compress our spring now and take the spring out. So to pop the axle out from the trailing arm, so the outer joint, uh, it's actually really tricky. So you have to move the differential up and down and you just have to play around with it. Uh, eventually it will come off. Um, you really don't need to remove the shock absorber and spring uh, for this thing to come out. Um, but uh, long story short, yeah, you just have to like play around and this thing will eventually come out. Make sure the transmission is neutral so you can turn this thing around while you try to take it out. All right, guys, we're getting there. Uh, I lowered the diff and I also lowered uh, this mount, okay? I have the support right here and the differential right there is supported as well. And I'm simultaneously like lowering this down, as you can see. And this gives me a lot more space to this control arm bolt. Uh, otherwise, if this is all the way up, you can't reach it. So you absolutely must lower this subframe a little bit on this side. And now this is also lowered. This gives me my spring. It's out. I'm about to take it out. Okay. But even in the rear of these cars, you need to use a spring compressor. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Um, unless you want to kill yourself. So you have a spring. It's going to come out. Probably through the other way. All right, guys, the spring is out. I left it all the way there. You know, we're not gonna joke around with that. And here we have our control arm right there. Just gotta undo those bolts and we're pretty much ready to go, guys, okay? All right, guys, I lowered this even more and now it gives us access to all the bolts right there and nuts and yeah finally the control arm is out and uh, it was quite a bit of a pain um, this bolt was okay I right? would come out but the other side this bolt was right here okay and then when you try to take it out it would go like this and then it would hit the flex disc so i had to actually loosen a couple of bolts on the flex disc and just move the flex disc to kind of flex it out of the way so i can take this bolt out and no you can't really take uh install this bolt on this side because of the subframe it's going to be in the way it's going to be kind of trying to go like this so it's going to be crooked uh, the only way is from that side so something to keep in mind and that's it guys i'm gonna go ahead start uh working on my diff uh, open the diff up and uh, i'm gonna get ready to install all this stuff back um new axle and new trailing arm
All right, this looks really clean, really nice. I'm gonna have to prepare the surface by uh, cleaning all this, just scrubbing it a little. Um, might use some razor, razor blade, but now I need to take this axle out. In order to do that, I have to turn this so I can see the circlip. It's gonna be a circlip in there that I have to pull out and then the axle is gonna come out. Here's the clip, don't lose it. Um, and I used the pick to pull it out. Now we can go ahead and take the axle out. There you go. It's one of them. So it has some damage here too from all that, from when it was hit. So we just decided to change all that. Okay, let's go ahead and install a new axle. It's the new axle. Boots are like pretty much new, everything. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and install this one. There's usually a washer uh, that's gonna be on the old axle, so don't forget to swap it to the new one. Like so. Alright guys, we have a brand new axle right here, I've reinstalled the circlip um, and I'm also covering some of these spots with uh, bearing grease for the owner um, and those are the spots that are actually like some of the spots right there are rusty just a little bit so I just coated them right now to protect them even more but then later on maybe we're gonna most likely we're gonna go ahead and sand it I'm gonna let the owner know and then we're gonna treat those areas properly but as of right now it's a temporary fix just coated with grease okay and now I'm getting ready to install this uh, control arm back and I actually painted it, I made it nice, so it looks really good. Alright, here's the new control arm. Um, not new, used, but in a great condition. Uh, this was all cleaned up, and I painted this thing, the backing plate. And as soon as I install this, I'm going to paint the whole control arm, actually. Um, so it's going to be really nice. Um, yeah, guys, that's the plan. I know I haven't filled my face uh, much today. If you guys want to see it, there it is. It's crazy. <laughs> Been under the car for all this time. Uh, lots of work. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and install this arm, control arm, trailing arm, and hopefully we'll be we'll be done soon. One more important tip is you have to make sure uh, this is all the way jacked up. There's still no spring or anything in there, but the reason why is because. Uh, you want to make sure you tighten these when there's a load so right now we're simulating a load so we're basically bringing this trailing arm up to around this position so we can tighten those bolts okay on two bushings one and the other and that way we don't have to worry about it once everything's back together because as you know once you reconnect and bolt up the subframe it's so hard to get to these bolts so that's why we're doing it right now and the reason why we're doing it is so this prevents premature wear of your bushings because if you go ahead and you tighten those bushings just the way they are let's say in the, when the control was on the ground um, then when you put the car back on the ground this control arm will actually the way it's gonna go it's not gonna sit in one spot it's gonna want to go ahead and it's gonna lift up basically like this and those bushings that are already tightened they're not gonna be able to move so they're just gonna twist off kind of like this causing the rubber to like wear prematurely so that's what we're doing right now i have this thing up in around this position i might actually go ahead and lift it a little more like that and then i'm gonna go ahead and tighten those two bolts all right all right guys i'm ready to install the spring and right there as you can see 
I first I painted it and then I put wheel bearing grease everywhere so this will never rust out there's gonna be no problems so it's kind of like a preventative maintenance pretty much as well um, and yeah I'm gonna go ahead and install the spring and uh, we're gonna be getting ready to um, put everything back all right guys so the control arm is drying up it's all nicely painted the spring is back on when you install the spring you gotta make sure that uh, the first that, that end of the coil spring is in place um, there's like a groove for it like a corner basically and that's it uh, the bolts are tightened up for the control arm I'm gonna go ahead and start lifting up this side and reinstall this uh, subframe back I'm also putting grease on all the bolts just so they don't season the bushings but it's still I'm really amazed how amazing these cars are uh, even after 40 years old I mean there's literally there's no rust on these bolts like and even those control arm bolts like that they were not seized in the bushings themselves so it's pretty amazing but I'm still putting some grease on all right so the parking brake is pretty much all assembled everything good just have to adjust this adjuster uh, but one more thing to note is these shoes are in good shape but the only thing is when I took this off this side was missing the hold down spring as you can see this side has a hold down spring uh, but this side is missing it um, so that's something to note you might need to get a uh, hardware for it uh, because this side right now is holding up and this side is not that firm so uh, as of right now I wouldn't use your parking brake uh, until you get that hold down spring I don't have anything in stock right now um, so yeah that's why uh, this is really important because if you keep using your parking brake it's po possible that this thing is gonna kind of come apart and then like jam up your rotor or something you know um, so that's why it's important to put that uh, hold down spring in there all right and then as far as the bearing everything is nice here looking good um, about to reassemble everything here back All right, this is looped up. Now I can go ahead and install my rotor. Rear brake pads need to be replaced. Uh, this caliper is uh, sticky. Uh, one piston is working, the other one is not going in. So it needs to be replaced as well as this uh, rubber brake hose. It's chafed up and it's pretty old right there, so it needs to be replaced. Um, I also recommend doing the same thing on the other side. New caliper, new pads. Uh, new brake hoses All right guys some updates. I just put back the parking brake assembly and mechanism and adjusted the parking brake I'll show it to you right now and it works great. Everything as you can see here is assembled um, And let's go ahead and Let's try to use this parking brake. Look how tight it is all right and let's go ahead and try to turn the wheel right now and it's awesome it holds pretty good it's adjusted properly all right now i'm gonna go ahead and release it okay we're gonna release this thing and we're gonna go ahead and make sure that it's free and it is all right great so I had to remove the exhaust because it was a ghetto repaired and it was just falling apart so that's why if we start this engine it's gonna be kind of loud but I think it's gonna sound pretty good actually uh, and long story short I'm about to put these heat shields back on uh, here's the parking brake mechanism right there it's all back together okay cable everything is reconnected all right there are a few areas where i did the corrosion prevention uh by using grease um and right now i'm going to install this heat shield because that's where the heat shield goes so i just kind of protected this area while i had this heat shield off um and yeah everything else is doing pretty good installing the other heat shields as well and it's pretty amazing how uh this car is 
really old school like a w123 and still has factory heat shields it's pretty amazing you know i'm surprised they're not missing because usually people are uh lazy to put them back on or whatever uh so but this this car is an exception it's pretty amazing all right guys everything is pretty much done i just have to put some fresh fluid into the differential uh, the, as you can see the rear cover is back on um, so yeah let's go ahead and put some new fluid in this baby and uh, should be all done okay guys so the car is level and uh, we're gonna go ahead and add more I'm gonna wait until it starts coming out from the fill plug. Oh, is that it? Let's see. Okay, that's it, started coming out. Gonna grab that fill plug, make sure it's clean. Gonna install that. Are you kidding me? There you go. Tighten this German tight. That's it. All right, everything is done. We just got to put the rear seats back on. And as far as the exhaust, it's pretty horrible. It's all rusted out. And the other piece looks even worse. Look at this. Somebody used, I don't know, foil something. It's, it's pretty crazy. So. Alright guys, this is about to get cleaned up. And... There you go, all nicely cleaned up, everything, I'm ready to put the seats back on right now. So you guys want to see the damage uh, to the wheel that I found? Um, apparently that damaged wheel is still here. <laughs> so. I just wanted to check and see, and look at that thing. That thing is just damaged pretty bad. Yeah. So yeah, that's how the wheel got damaged, and then you saw the damage to the trailing arm, and uh, our axle as well. All right, guys. Uh, it's a really beautiful interior on this car, actually. And I believe the mileage is uh, uh, original, 182,000 miles. I mean, the condition is pretty immaculate.